Okay, so we talked about dandruff as technically not being infectious because we're gonna be cleaning our brushes and our, all that, but there are some cases where the infection might be a sign of something really big and we don't wanna you know, cause harm to the client or spread the infection to anyone else. So one of the other types of dandruff is gonna be called pityriasis, capitis meaning head simplex. And this is the technical term for classical dandruff that is characterized by scalp irritations, large flakes and an itchy scalp. The scales may attach to the scalp in masses, scatter loosely in the hair or fall to the shoulders. You want to then tell the client to start using anti-dandruff shampoo and conditional, conditioner and maybe a dandruff lotion um, before you do a chemical service in them because you don't want to irritate their scalp or cause any kind of irritation or bleeding. Um, they might be complaining about itching a lot. You also want to try to refer them to a physician for this and especially for pityriasis steatodes. If you guys have ever seen pityriasis steatodes, it is terrifying. It is large clumps of almost like a curd-like cheesy appearance. The dandruff might be colored a little bit yellow. This is going to be um, dandruff that is accumulation of greasy or waxy scales mixed with stebum that stick to the scalp and crusts. As explained in chapter eight, um, when this condition is accompanied by redness and inflammation, it's called seborrheic dermatitis. Um, you should not perform a service on clients that have any of these conditions. They should be referred to a physician and then you know prescribe some anti-dandruff shampoo. Pitterized geotodes actually do treatments that you can use in the salon where you're putting it on the scalp and it helps, they call it snow blower. It helps to um, you know treat the scalp, they might feel a lot better and you can rinse it out. As long as you're sanitizing things, it should be fine. Um, on a side note, there's another important type of alopecia that was not talked about and that's traction alopecia. That's if you're braiding too tight, it can cause the hair to um, fall out. Um, with hair extensions, if you get a client with jacked up extensions, that can cause hair loss, as well as um, cause them to be at risk for scalp infunction scalp infection. There was a trend a few years ago where people were doing the glue on weaves and I think there was a celebrity that this happened to um, where people were taking the stocking cap, putting it on their head and applying the glue and sticking the wig on. What happens, they were thinking the glue wouldn't go through the stocking but it would and that would cause the glue to irritate the scalp. So what happens is that you're leaving this weave on, you're running, you're sweating, you're perspiring. That's now a damp, dark, humid environment, perfect breeding ground for fungus and bacteria and it was causing people to have these horrible patches of dandruff that they smelled really funky and they caused a lot of itching. The most common um, fungal infection that you will encounter in the salon is going to be um, tinea and that's going to be the technical term for ringworm. You should not perform services on someone that has this. Um, tinea barbrae is called barber's itch. It's uh, frequently encountered in um, infection resulting from hair services. You'll, it affects the coarse hairs in the mustache and beard area and the hairs in the back of the neck. They may get inflamed, they may flake and what you'll see with this type of um, infection is it causes ring-like patches of hair just to shed out and fall out because the fungus is feasting on the keratin. Um, which is traumatic for the client. All forms of tinea are contagious. Um, bathtubs, swimming pools, and unclean personal articles are sources of transmission. You want to clean and you want to refer them to a, um, a physician. Tinea capitis is another type of fungal infection by red papules or spots at the opening of hair follicles. The patches spread and the hair becomes brittle as the fungus will eat it. Hair will break off leaving only a stump or the hair may be shed from an enlarged opening follicle. And this is where I have to be careful because if they're itching enough, they can do damage by itching and cause scar tissue. That can cause permanent hair loss. Tinea favosa is known as tinea favis. It's characterized by dry sulfur yellow cup-like crust on the scalp called scutula. Scutula has a distinctive odor. Scars from tinea favosa are bald patches that may be pink or white and shiny. So on a side note with scutula, um, it's really stinky. It has a mousy like odor and it is very, very um, repulsive. One of my coworkers worked in a salon where someone had had that and she was actually shampooing them. And she said it felt like um, they were wearing almost like a helmet when she pushed hard enough, she felt it like crack. And then the odor came out and she actually almost like threw up on the client. She was started to dry heave. She had to run to the back of the shampoo room and she actually um, got sick there and she had to compose herself. It, she shouldn't have shampooed it, but she didn't know any better because she was a new stylist. That's how serious this can be if it's bad enough. On to parasitic infections. Um, in the newer book, they talk about um, tick infestations. Um, I don't know about you, but you're not gonna see a client that has a giant amount of ticks in their head. That would be pretty scary. The two most common types of um, parasitic infections of the scalp are gonna be mites and lice. Scabies is very contagious. It causes, um, a, a mite will burrow into the skin and the mite burrowing is gonna cause vesicles, which are called blisters and um, pustules, inflamed pimples of pus. They form in the scalp and they cause excessive itching and that will make the condition worse. 
you need to use special disinfectants. Pediculosis cap capitis, think of um, lose as like lice. Pediculosis is head lice. Um, head lice are very difficult to treat. They're very common in children. They make specialized shampoos and a specialized knit comb that you can go through and try to scrape off all the lice. If you see the most severe lice infection videos, they are gut-wrenching because these lice are crawling all over. These insects, what these insects do is they're able to spread by crawling. They can't fly or anything. They crawl or they get transmitted from like, you know, sharing hats or combs. And when they get on there, you'll see that the nits are the um, eggs. That's the hard part because you want to kill the nits. You can kill the adults by even using at home a flat iron to heat. Some people claim if you use a flat iron at a high enough temperature, you'll kill them. Try that at your own discretion um, because you really want to use specialized shampoos to get rid of them. But they're now finding that these head lice are evolving to become resistant to the shampoos. So what they're doing now is they're using a specialized vacuum that's able to use dry heat to kill the nits and the lice. Um, watch the video from BBC where they purposely infected someone with head lice and they learned about the, how they spread and all that. Head lice also prefer um, straight hair for some reason, but they can occur in any type of um, hair type. Um, staph infections, these are very common and they can infect the skin or scalp and they can be deadly if the person's immunocompromised. A fernicle is a technical term for a boil. Um, it's gonna be an acute localized bacterial infection of the hair follicle that produces constant pain. So you might get like a bump and it might go away. It is limited to a specific area and produces a pustule um, perforated by hair. A carbuncle is an inflam inflammation of this subcutaneous tissue caused by a staph, like hawkeye. It is similar to a fernicle, but it's a lot larger. You don't want to perform a service on anyone with this because it can cause the infection to spread and you can put yourself and others at risk. Um, it's important to know that you should do a hair and scalp analysis because that will be the basis of your consultation. When you're starting to feel the hair, you're going through there, you're feeling for how dense it is, you're going to be feeling the hair, how porous is it, you're going to be doing the strand test, how elastic is it. That will tell you everything you need to know before you proceed with the hair styling service, hair cutting service, hair cutting, and you're also going to check for some of the um, disorders and diseases. And it's important because um, all types of hair will react differently to different types of services. Um, the four most important factors to consider in a hair analysis are texture, density, porosity, and elasticity. Other factors you should be aware of is the growth pattern and dryness versus oiliness. Because a person could have um, dry hair but an oily scalp because the scalp is a skin and they're producing the oil here but the oil is not going down here. They can have um, oily hair and scalp. There are so many possibilities. So you know, know that hair texture is going to be the thickness of the diameter of the individual hair. So um, you can have um, fine hair, um, medium hair, and then thick hair. Um, thick hair feels like you can have, it's more if it's coarse because the diameter is huge. You can have a person with fine hair but have a lot of it. It is not uncommon for um, different areas to have different textures. Um, coarse hair has the largest diameter. It is stronger than fine hair um, for the same reason that a thick rope is stronger than a thick rope. It is more resistant to processing, so you have to process your times longer for perms, relaxers, and hair colors. Medium texture hair is the most common texture and the standard to which uh, other hair is compared um, because medium is more common. It does not pose any specific problems or concerns. Small hair has the smallest diameter, is more fragile, easier to process, and more susceptible to damage from chemical service than coarse and medium hair. So on fine hair, they can overprocess with color, they can overprocess with perms. It's important to always check that. As with hair cuticle analysis, hair texture can be determined by feeling a single dry strand between the fingers, um, and you want to hold and just feel as you work your way down. Um, over time, you'll be able to feel what uh, coarse hair feels like. Usually, when you feel one um, strand, you can say, "Oh, I, you know, it feels a little like coarse, or it feels a little um, thick." That will give you your idea. I always say, use the example of someone who's naturally blonde with pin straight hair. That's usually fine hair. Someone who has um, curly, dark um, brown hair with some gray is usually more coarse. That will give you an idea of how to compare the two. And when you're not sure if it feels fine or it feels coarse, it's usually right in the middle. So hair density, on the other hand, is how much hair is on the head total. I always think this color chart is so amazing because it shows you um, how blonde hair has, on average, about 1,400 hairs. Um, brown hair has 110,000 hairs in the head. Black hair has on about average 
108 hairs in the head, and reds have the fewest amount, but if you think about this, red hair always feels like it's um, thicker because it's a lot frizzier, a lot more coarse. The individual diameter is thicker. But on the flip side, when you have a natural blonde that's pinned straight, they have a lot of hair, but the hair is fine, so it doesn't feel as thick as someone who's like a natural redhead and curly. Hair density measures um, individual hair strands on one square inch of the scalp. It indicates how many hairs there are on a person's head. It can be classified as low, medium, or high, um, also known as thin, medium, thick, or dense. Hair density is different from hair texture. Individuals with the same hair texture can have different densities. You can have thick, um, what is it? You can have a, a coarse hair texture, but have a sparse, it's meaning like you're like kind of like balding and curling. Or you have curly hair and you're balding. So it's important to kind of know how to differentiate that. Each individual um, hair product line will actually go into that with you. I know that Redken does. The average hair density is about 2,200 hairs per one square inch. Um, hair with high density um, has more hairs per one square inch than hair with low density. So if you think about one square inch that you're looking under a microscope, you'll see that thick hair has more um, hairs popping out. Fine hair um, or thin hair has, I should say not fine hair, thin hair has um, less density. And I, I do the same mistake. We all kind of like throw these same terminologies together. You will get it as you get more practice with this. Um, porosity, on the other hand, is the ability of hair to absorb moisture. Porosity will affect all of your services. It can mean the difference between an amazing hair color to having a hair color fail. It can also mean the difference between having an amazing perm to having um, hair that is on the floor and breaking off. Um, hair that Healthy hair with a compact cuticle is naturally resistant to being penetrated by moisture and is referred to as hydrophobic, meaning water feeling. Porous hair has a raised cuticle that easily absorbs moisture and is called hydrophilic, meaning water loving. Hair with a low porosity is considered resistant. Um, chemical services performed on hair with low porosity require a more alkaline solution. They require a longer processing time. Hair with average porosity is normal hair, and it really depends about you checking you know, for test curl if you're perming or color if you're doing the color test. Hair with high porosity is considered overly porous and is often the result of previous overprocessing. Overly porous hair is damaged, dry, fragile, and brittle. Chemical services performed um, on overly porous hair require less alkaline solution and a lower pH, which will prevent additional damage because when you have hair that is um, very bleached, you're raising that porosity. You'll learn with advanced classes that hair has a total of five porosity levels or porosity grades. When hair is very porous, it's gumming off. It'll suck the tone of the toner. That's usually your first sign that your hair is very porous. The texture of the hair can be an indication of the porosity, but it's only a general rule of thumb. You want to know that different degrees of porosity can be found in all hair textures. Um, you want to check the porosity of hair by taking a strand of hair, four different areas of the head, um, front of the hairline, temple, crown, and nape. Hold the strand securely with one hand and slide um, the fingers from end to scalp. And if you feel that it feels very um, healthy, that means it has a, high, um, a low porosity. It's very compact and healthy. If you're feeling upward and it feels very rough and coarse, that means that the hair has a moderate to high porosity. I'm gonna break here because I know it's a lot of information at once and it all kind of gets confusing. And then I'm gonna come back and end it with um, elasticity, hair growth patterns, dry hair and scalp, oily hair and scalp, healthy hair and happy clients.